So on this note, I want to introduce three key speakers that personally mean a lot to me because there are three amazing ladies who will speak about Cambridge being home and a source of hope. And the first one is Shahida Rahman, an award-winning author, writer and publisher. Hello everybody, it's lovely to see so many people here today. I'm going to talk about hope is where the home is. Hope is, be, is being able to see that there is light despite of all darkness. As Jo Cox, in her first speech to Parliament, said, we are far more united and have far more in common than that which divides us. And Jo has murdered in the most horrific way on the 16th of June 2016. And today, we are remembering her, and we are remembering her beautiful message. And I'm reminded of this every time I'm approached with the question, where are you from? My reply, I was born and raised in Cambridge. And no matter how many times I'm asked this question as I walk through the streets of my hometown, it always surprises me. And my answer surprises them. They say, really? And that's why you speak English so well. You have a Cambridge accent. Do I have a Cambridge accent? I don't know. It could be odd if I didn't. And as Joe said, I have much more in common with the people of Cambridge than I have differences. Now, I'm a British Muslim woman of Bengali heritage, and I was born in Cambridge Maternity Hospital and raised in this beautiful city. And my family have been part of this fabric of Cambridge for 60 years. My father settled here in 1957, and he opened one of the first Indian restaurants in Cambridge, which was in Regent Street, and it's disappeared now today. Um, he, he worked extremely hard to give himself and his family, uh, us, a better life. And he did, and Cambridge is my home. And this means that before Margaret Thatcher scrapped the under seven um, plan for drinking milk, um, I drank free milk at playtime, the straw was the best. Uh, my earliest memory of school was drawing pictures for Queen Silver's Jubilee in 1975. And my picture crown was displayed in the school hall, so I can remember that quite well. And later, we learnt about the Titanic. My teacher had a Daily Mirror newspaper dated in 1912, the day after it sank, and I was allowed to take it home and show my parents. And I watched programmes such as Play School, you probably all did as well, Bagpuss, Trumpton, Finger Bobs. And in the 80s, I watched Grange Hill, the A-Team, that was probably the biggest show on a Saturday night on ITV, and everyone watched it. And I listened to songs such as, you know, Aha, Wham, Rick Astley, and I was teased at school for doing so. But that had probably shaped many of you as well as I. So these similarities, these shared experiences, this love for the same memories strengthen the fabric of our community and give us hope for a peaceful and harmonious future. So let's join together to replace hate with this hope. I feel privileged to be the bridge between my parents and my children, and I have the opportunity to look forward and back and weave the different strands of my life into a rich tapestry of culture, belief, freedom, and balance. And I'm unique, and so is each of you. And our individuality enriches our community, and our commonalities strengthen our bonds. And Jo's legacy will live on. She will live in our hearts every day, and we will remember her, not just today, but every day and always. And we are far more united and have far more in common that which divides us. Let's spread this message and fight the prejudice we face today. Let's build alliances with interfaith groups, community groups and neighbourhood organisations. Let's build unity and cohesion. Let's build our values and stand united with shared principles. I'm proud to be part of the Cambridge Get Together today. To thank you to the organisers for inviting me. And let me end with a, civil, uh, a quote by the civil rights activist, Jesse Jackson. At the end of the day, we must go forward and hope and not, not backward by fear and division. Thank you very much.